Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're going to pick up on a story that we covered several months ago. The headlines these days are about COVID-19, its impact, and the slow vaccine rollout. The papers are headlining the updated economic stimulus plans, the surging price of silver, surging AMC stock, and the military coup in Myanmar. Frankly, these are all important, but there's something far more important to pay attention to, and it's not making any headlines. I'm talking about the handling of the situation in Hong Kong. Depending on how the world responds to the Hong Kong situation will likely determine how China acts and reacts when it comes to Taiwan. Hong Kong is the dress rehearsal for Taiwan, in my opinion. You might be wondering what all of this has to do with real estate investing. Stay with me on this, and I think I'll make the link in just a minute. One of the things that can dramatically affect real estate is migration. And when people pick up and leave due to political situations, we can see large-scale migration. And two weeks ago, the Hong Kong government told UK citizens they will need to choose between having British status or Chinese status. The new policy was in reaction to the British government's decision to allow people with BNO, that is British nationality overseas status, to apply for a visa and have a path to citizenship where they eventually would get a British passport. China stated that as of January 2021, the BNO status would no longer be recognized by the Hong Kong government. The British government estimates that 5.4 million Hong Kong residents are eligible for the scheme. That's about 72% of the 7.5 million people in Hong Kong. That includes 2.9 million that are directly in BNO status, and then 2.3 million dependents of BNOs. 187,000 are 18 to 23-year-olds with at least one parent having British nationality overseas. And it's difficult to say how many eligible people will actually come to the UK. The latest estimate from the UK government puts the number expected to take up the offer at about 300,000. Now, there's about 80,000 people in Hong Kong who hold US passports, and officially 300,000 in Hong Kong who hold Canadian passports. The unofficial number suggests as many as half a million Canadians may reside in Hong Kong. So the question is, how many people may choose to leave Hong Kong in favor of their second passport? It's hard to believe that things will get better for foreigners living in Hong Kong. It's not like the climate's going to get more business friendly or that individual citizens' rights and freedoms will improve in the coming years. So the question is, how many will leave and how soon? Since China enacted the national security law, things have gotten very difficult in Hong Kong. The incentive has been increasing for Hong Kong residents to leave. In spite of this, China has been mounting a public relations campaign indicating that Hong Kong has a bright future. In some recent cases, some residents in mainland China holding dual citizenship have been detained, and many have relinquished their foreign passport prior to being put on trial and imprisoned in China. It's not clear whether this renunciation of foreign citizenship was done voluntarily or under duress. But once they renounce citizenship, they lose consular access. They lose the advocacy of a foreign government looking into the circumstances of their court case and imprisonment. Those Hong Kong residents who hold a foreign passport are being advised by Western governments to carry their foreign identification at all times. And, when asked for their identification by Chinese authorities, they should produce their foreign passport. So what does this mean for real estate investors? We could see a significant influx of residents from Hong Kong in the coming months. 80,000 people coming to the U.S. spread evenly across the nation would have very little impact on housing demand, especially when measured against 330 million people. But they won't be moving to North Dakota or New Mexico. It's most likely they're going to move to a coastal city that already has a large Cantonese community. Remember, people in Hong Kong don't speak Mandarin. They speak Cantonese. It's a different language. It's a different culture. We can expect people to favor cities like Vancouver, Toronto, San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles, and a few others. If 300,000 Canadians were to land in Toronto or Vancouver, where would they go? I mean, there just isn't the vacancy. Not enough to absorb that many people. If 80,000 were to land in San Francisco, L.A., or Seattle, where would they go? See, business is about solving business problems, and to that extent, real estate's a business. I believe there's a window of opportunity for investors that are paying attention, who can clearly identify the needs of Hong Kong residents looking to relocate in North America to deliver a product ideally suited to the needs of someone coming to the U.S. or Canada in a hurry. Maybe they'll send the kids across first and then follow six months later when personal and financial affairs are in order. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. 
go make some great things happen. Talk to you again tomorrow.